Heard of Gordy? We know he's a Sagittarian, okay? Let me tell you ladies something that if you don't know it, get ready, because I'm about to teach you something. You're welcome, all right? The Sagittarian man will not mess with any woman that he feels like he cannot benefit from. Remember, Nayrob told you. Love bugs, hello there, Bellas. If you have not already done so, please remember to like, share to Facebook, subscribe, and check out uptopbeauty.com. Today's looky looky is my Annie Jane ear tings. Oh, I'm so happy that I got another pair of earrings outside of them damn uh, uh, bamboo earrings. But anyway, these are super light. Super cute. Ooh, check that out. Ooh, giving me exclusive. And if you are not already a part of our book club, please remember to hit the Patreon link below and or the join button here on the YouTube. And for a small monthly fee of $5, you babies, yes you, can be privy to all the shenanigans before the YouTube gets it if the YouTube gets it. Now, ooh, We've been waiting on this. Let's talk about Barry, ooh, Barry, Me, and Motown by Raynoma Gordy Singleton. In Detroit was the wonderful melodge called Rhythm and Blues. Early on, there were Clyde McFadder and the Drifters. Then came the Five Satins with In the Still of the Night, Talk to Me by Little Willie John. You know Little Willie John. Mm -hmm. Little Willie John. Uh, remember from the Eddie James book, we know that he is uh, Little Willie Junkie John. Okay. We also know that Little Willie Junkie John is a porn director. And Come Go With Me by the Dale Vikings. Hank Ballard and the Midnighters got all of us heaving with sighs to their suggestive titles, Work With Me Annie, Annie Had a Baby, and Annie Aunt Fanny. I was a pushover for the mid-50s hit, Sincerely, which was done by the Moon Glows. You know the Moon Glows. That was uh, Harvey Fuqua and uh, what's his name? Marvin Gaye. On the flip side of my album of early musical influences was the whole spectrum of pop jazz, Broadway musicals, and of course the immortal, the immortal composers of classical music. In high school, I was introduced to Rachmaninoff and Chopin. Considering that the family is well aware of uh, Sugar Ray's talents, you would think that they want to nurture uh, her talents and cultivate her talents and send her to Cass, okay? We know about Cass because we remember reading about that in the uh, Mary Wilson book, right? But Cass had a strict curriculum, okay? And she wanted to go because she felt like she could do it. The mother being protective of her child, okay? She did not want to deal with her daughter being rejected. You know, I mean, I don't blame her mother, but you have to believe in your baby. On yeah. the first day of high school, I trotted off to Central. On the second day, I took the bus over to Cass and enrolled myself passing the musical aptitude test with flying colors. It was about a month before Mama knew about it, and by then it was too late. She was so impressed I'd been accepted that she forgave me. In order to graduate from Cass, a student had to have musical expertise in eight areas. Each of us was required to play a wind instrument, a string instrument, the piano, and the elective instrument. 
We had to participate in choir, the band, the orchestra, the orchestra, and at least one other ensemble. By the time I left Cass Technical High School, my understanding of music theory made it possible for me to pick up almost any instrument and play it. See what I'm saying? See what I'm Bertie saying? Gordy, we know he's a Sagittarian, okay? Let me tell you ladies something that if you don't know it, get ready, because I'm about to teach you something. You're welcome, all right? The Sagittarian man will not mess with any woman, any woman that he feels like he cannot benefit from. Remember, Narob told you. The discipline that came most easily to me was arrangement. I knew instinctively how different sounds blended together, how to achieve all different kinds of feelings just by alternating an instrumental voice, how to select the instrument that spoke most beautifully and clearly for the particular piece. Raynoma, y'all gonna see, man, if it was not for Raynoma Gordy, there would be no Motown. You hear me? Let me tell you this. A lot of us can resonate with a lot of these uh, books that we're reading, right? But anyway, by the age of 16 years old, Sugar Ray's mama had did exactly what my family would do. Make it comfortable to stay home, okay? If the child stays home, then they not out in the street. If they home, they safe. You can watch them. Okay, so sometimes you bring the party into the house so that you know where your child is. Sugar Ray's mama had turned the basement into a little, you know, party spot for her children. She got enough of them, right? She hooked it up. She uh, painted the walls purple, I think. Uh, gave them a little TV downstairs, a little stereo component set. Um, a couch and everything. Sugar Ray looked back on it and was like, I ain't too proud of some of the things that happened down there. Now, I still had my virginity, right? But I was down there with that blue and red light on, grinding with some of my suitors. Although right. her mother was right upstairs while the shenanigans is going on downstairs, it don't matter. My baby in my house. I ain't got to worry about nobody taking her vagina because her siblings are right there. It most certainly was every Friday we had our friends over for the parties. My boyfriend, Paul Humphrey, a gifted drummer, drove a motorcycle like a maniac, wore leather, a head rag, and a bandana tied around each thigh. Now dig this, okay? Because the little boy know that the pappy don't play, he ain't drive that motorcycle up to the house. No, answer no, okay? That, no, right? He would stop that blicker off at the corner, take all that booze snit off and come in the house like he had some sense. She knew that that ninja could drink, all right? He was old drunky poo. So she was saying to herself, although we was having good fun downstairs, wasn't no alcohol, okay? Because if it was alcohol or beer, anything like that, that nigga would have acted a fool and my daddy would have had to come downstairs and whoop his ass. There was also some very serious work going on downstairs. I had begun writing songs when I was 12 years old and had begun making rustic recordings on a web core wire machine that mama and daddy bought for us. I think we're going to make some hit songs, I said, taking charge as usual. That is if Alice can remember the words. I tweaked my sister cheeks affectionately. We had high expectations. With Mike serving as engineer, one of her brothers, we cut one of my doo tunes with Alice and I singing a cappella and sent it off to RCA in New York. I ripped open a reply envelope. We received your platter, but at this time, dot, dot, dot. No matter, we continue to rehearse my songs, making up little dance routines for each one. And the musical entity, Alice and Ray, was born. Now before we go forward, I want to know how many people actually take themselves singing a song that they created and sent it to a uh, record uh, label. I did. 
I did. I remember this doing it around the time of New Edition when they first came out. Because I'm saying to myself, if these young boys could do it, I can do it too. I also remember getting one of those letters saying, uh-uh, girl, answer no. I'm not the best singer in the world, but I can write. I soon graduated from Cass, and the future spread out ahead of me full of options. And if those true romance magazines could be believed, my prince was somewhere out there waiting for me, which was exactly what my sister Rosalind said one day. She was working at the city county building downtown and had spotted a young guy that she wanted me to meet. Ray, just meet him. He is so intelligent, you can bet he's going somewhere. Dresses nice and looks good. Rosalind insisted. You'll like now, This is the thing. Her sister, Rosalind, is very voluptuous, okay? And she is looking at her sister like, why you don't want him? And then, why he don't want you? What the hell he gonna want with my skinny ass? Look at you. You got everything. Tits, boobs, tits his boobs, uh, hips, ass, legs, pretty face, everything. What's going on here? Well, he did like me so much so that he swore up and down, even Sophia Loren couldn't hold a candle to my beauty. And for me, Charles Lyles was everything that Rosalind had promised. Charles thought I walked on water, your eyes, your mouth, your hair. He'd crow like a proud rooster. He was also a number one fan of Allison Ray. But after dating less than a year, we had something other than Allison Ray's singing career to worry about. I was pregnant. Poor Charles knew as little about the realities of love and marriage as I. After a small ceremony at Mama and Daddy's, the two of us left to spend a honeymoon night at his mama's. I turned to say goodbye to Alice, but Alice was like, ding, no, you ain't going nowhere without me. And, and, and I know you like they how stuff like this. I don't know, y'all. I don't know how stuff like this happens, but it just happens, right? So anyway, she's married to the dude Charles, right? Remember, she got a little sister named Alice, that them two work together in a musical group and they're close in age, right? So when she was headed out the door to go live with her husband, Charles, and his family with their baby, Alice was like, oh, no, 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 no. You ain't about to leave me here. I'm going with you. I'm okay. telling you the way that they did things back then, yeah, it may sound effed up. Okay, but it gave you so much dignity and pride. You know, I'm very proud of how my family raised us. All of my aunts were 15, 16 years old when they had their children. My mother was 15 when she had me. And they made you marry the nigga. Okay, the only reason why my mother didn't marry my uh, father was because my grandfather was dead. Okay. But when my grandfather was alive, my aunts had to marry their baby fathers because you couldn't do that. Say what you want to say about how they did things back then, but people were a whole lot better. Okay, I'm sorry. I said it, goddamn it. That's okay, Charles shrugged. I know how close you two are. Within weeks, she moved in with us at my mother-in-law's. In December of 1955, we had our son, Cliff. Though Charles and I were in love with our baby, we hadn't been having an easy time. We eventually left his mom's for our own place on Canfield Street, a brand new two bedroom apartment on the east side of Detroit. Charles had stopped pursuing his music, quit school, and gone to work for Pontiac Motors. He received subsistence pay from the Air Force that was really more than adequate, but he felt terribly pressured by the impeding cost of raising a family to include Alice ass, okay? Alice still in high school, though. Okay. And with my whole being caught up in the creative process of having a baby, I neglected my dreams. I listened almost forlornly to a soft up-tempo music drifting from the windows of the couple next door. Whoever is writing that music, I thought, is pretty damn talented. It was a departure from arm breed, more of a pop sound with a four freshman of Letterman feel. When I finally introduced myself to the man next door, I complimented him on the music. He responded, thanks, nice to meet you. 
My name's William Stevenson, but you can call me Mickey. Now, if you have not already done so, please remember to like, share to Facebook, and subscribe because it is so important to our success here on the YouTube. Now, remember this. The same people that you meet on the way up will always be the same people that you meet on the way down. Just be good to each other. Peace.